Uh, we're with David Bushman today in his shop. Dave, thanks for inviting us to yeah. come and see. Yeah, glad to have you. Uh, Dave is, is currently the Vice President of Richmond Wood Turners. Uh, tell me, Dave, what got you started in turning in the first place, and uh, how long have you been doing it? Uh, in 2012, uh, my wife and I were watching a program on public broadcasting. It featured two artists. The first was Dale Chihuly. The second was the Moultrup family in um, uh, Georgia. And I was very intrigued by that part of the program. And I told my wife, I said, you know, that'd be fun to do. And so I um, started there. And I first thing I needed to do, I, I never stood in front of a lathe, um, is find a school that I could go to. And I got online and found this organization called uh, American Association of Woodturners, and they had a, a page that listed schools, and my criteria was something I could drive to in half a day. And I was living in the northern Shenandoah Valley at the time, and I found this school in uh, near Buckstown or wherever, uh, a guy named David Ellsworth had a school, and uh, it was I could get there in three or four hours. So I contacted David, and by my luck, he'd had a cancellation on his the next week's school. Wanted to know if I could mm -hmm. come, and I said, "Yes, I'll I'll do it." And so the next week, I was there at his school, and uh, lo and behold, I didn't know who David Ellsworth was, but I soon found out. And, <laughs> you um, and learned from one of the greats. I, I learned. And he does uh, just an excellent job teaching you the basics of how to make a bowl and how to make a hollow form. And he does it in like three days or four days. And uh, it, was, it was great. It was what I needed. And how long ago was this? In 2012. 2012. So About nine years I've been, been in, turning. In, in the nine years, have you developed a, a, a favored turning type or something that you yeah, prefer to turn I, over? Um, I prefer hollow forms. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do some bowls. Um, like I do, uh, you know, yarn bowls and things like that. Uh, but most of the stuff I like to do is uh, hollow forms or uh, like an open form like this. It's not really a hollow form or, or a, a bowl. Um, and then I, uh, something I've also kind of picked up, I, know, I remember when um, American Woodturner, the magazine, you know, it used to be, you'd see the cover to be a bowl or a hollow form. Then all of a sudden, people started embellishing them. They'd be painting and carving and all that. And I kind of said, nah, I'm going to kind of resist that temptation to do that. And, but eventually, I broke in and started doing a little bit of carving. And now I, I really, uh, almost all the pieces I make, like any hollow form or bowl, I, I try and do some some embellishing of the exterior of the of the piece kind of changes the whole the whole bowl when you yeah. when you're done with it yeah yeah and i i probably the two biggest influencers on me are david ellsworth and then i i really like liam flynn mm -hmm. and his work and i like the the footed vessels and mm -hmm. things he did so i try and do a lot of footed things and uh I do an inner and outer rim like he does. So it's... it's uh, so you got a variety of things that you enjoy to do. Yeah. Well, we're standing in front of your lathe. Yeah. What, could you take a minute and tell us about your yeah. lathe and what you like about yeah. it? My lathe is a Robust Liberty. It's an, Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. I think they stopped several years ago making it. But um, I was very fortunate when I attended David Ellsworth's school, it was just happened to be when he was getting ready to re-outfit his studio. And so this was available, it was for sale, and so I told him I would, would buy it. And uh, so I had never stood before a lathe before I went to his school, and then when I left, I also had a lathe, or had, a, had to go back up and pick it up, but uh, I knew I was gonna have a lathe to use. Um, it's, a, it's a 16 inch swing, I think about 28 inch length is the maximum you can turn with it. And uh, 
One of the nice features about this lathe is that, especially since I'm into doing hollow forms, is you can move the um, drive head to the end of the ways. And also I have a, a swing away uh, feature on the tailstock. It drops out of the way so I can stand here and work on a hollow form and uh, very easily. Um, uh, that's one of the really nice features of this lathe. It also has a variable frequency drive on it and the robust lathe only had one set of belts. It didn't have different settings. So it has a digital readout on the drive and that is the exact spindle speed. So you don't have to do any mental math or anything like that, try and figure out how fast the spindle is going. Um, one, one drawback of it, and apparently this was one of the first ones they made, um, it has a tray underneath, but the tray is wider than the, the ways, so all the sawdust just goes down and collects in the tray. It's wonderful for putting my stuff in there, but I have to take my shop back every so often and back out all the sawdust so I can find my stuff, because it collects down there. I think they corrected that later on later models, but uh, that was one. The only drawback I have on this lathe is that. But it's a, it's a, it's a very good lathe. If you had to replace your lathe tomorrow, other than the tray, uh, you like the lathe the way as it is, but mm -hmm. is there anything that you would do different, anything that you would change on a new lathe? Um, Really, um, the one thing I always initially was thinking, well, this is a step, stepping stone. And I'll, I'll go get a bigger lathe, something to have with a bigger swing. And of course, I'm kind of biased toward robust. But uh, the more I use this thing, the 16 inch swing is all I need. Uh, I do mostly hollow forms, so you're not doing these big, huge 24 inch diameter hollow forms, uh, you know, you do a, a 12, 13 inch diameter hollow form, that's a big, big hollow form and uh, this can handle it fine. So I, if I get another lathe, which I, 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 maybe I will someday, I don't know, but it'll probably be about the same size. It won't be one of these ones with the big, bigger swing. I think a, a 16 inch swing like this one is just more than adequate for what I do. Well, we're standing right in your shop and it looks like your tools are directly behind you. If yeah. you, would you take a few minutes and just walk us around your shop and kind of introduce yeah. it to us? Yeah, I'll start over here with the, um, uh, this rack, I've got a couple jam chucks, which are just basically um, uh, laminated plywood. And these were actually the first thing I turned because um, I, I needed a jam chuck if I was going to finish the bottom of any bowl I turned. So I made those first, and then I also have a rack here with uh, my different uh, uh, chucks. And um, I have a big, large Titan. They're all Nova except for this one, which is a, uh, a Grizzly. Um, but these are Novas. And... Um, and I have them all set up with the different size jaws. I don't like having to stop and change jaws, so I bought a, uh, a set. I have a set of chucks with each um, size jaw that I need. Um, then I got some uh, face plates down here. The compass I use quite often. Um, <clears throat> as far as my tools. I have one rack here. This is all my hollowing tools. And the lower rack is my, um, uh, I guess, outside tools, if you want to call them that. And the hollowing tools have a combination of anything with a wood handle, so David Ellsworth, and then I have some Trent Bosch 
uh, tools. I go from a three quarter inch all the way down to, I guess this is a, I think it's a three eighths, I believe, on the smaller Ellsworth. And down here I have my gouges, scrapers. Um, I even have a little carbide tool that I use. Um, I use that for, it's just a square tool, which is, it's handy when you want to rough out a bowl real quick or something like that. You can do that. But uh, probably the, again, it's the fact that I went to his school, the probably number one gouge I use is the Ellsworth gouge. Um, and if you come around here, you can't see it probably behind the um, lathe. I've got a, an air compressor. This is a, um, a California Air Tools compressor. The reason I bought it, it was one of the quietest ones on the market. And so I could have it in here in the workshop with me, and it, you just didn't get a lot of uh, noise with it. Um, this is my sander. And this is, uh, all it is is a Harper Freight angle drill. And it's been fantastic. I had one prior to this, um, lasted me seven years, and it finally, the bearings wore out on it and I bought another one and so if you need a, a good sander for if you catch the right sale you get it for 30 bucks and it's it's been great um, over here I've got my vacuum chuck system and uh, it's a uh, frugal uh, chuck around here um, I've just got a bookcase and I keep all my equipment um, for carving, I use the Fordham system primarily, and I like using the Sabre uh, rotary carvers. Um, those are the primary uh, things I use to do all my carving and embellishing. I also have some little drum sanders that fit on the Fordham. If I need to do some sanding, I'll use that. Um, I do also, I'll pull those out here in a minute, have a, uh, a uh, um, flex cut carvers I use also. Then, as far as wood burning, I have a Sorby wood burning system here, and it uses the, uh, the wire and you can, if you want, make custom uh, tips with it. And I've done that uh, uh, for a lot of things where you do like a little coil and things like that. And you can make them yourself just by a, a spool of wire. And, uh, and I use that. Um, have my finishes here um, on this shelf. I use, I like using wipe on poly. I also use this a lot, wood turner's finish. Usually use this on like yarn bowls and stuff because it gives you a real nice slick finish. And then I love uh, Mahoney's walnut oil. That's great. Forgot to mention my sandpaper, how I manage that. I have this little cart, and in each drawer, like this is the 120, I've got 80 grit here, and what I do for the disc, I just put them in a plastic container and label what, what's in them. And here, here are the 220, 3 inch, and so forth, and I have my sheets in here also. And for the sheets, I, I like using the, um, the purple uh, ceramic. Uh, 3M uh, sandpaper. Uh, another thing I keep in here, and this is a couple important things, every piece I make, I log it. And um, when I'm finished turning it, it's got a number. I write a description 
I'll make a little sketch and I give the basic dimensions of it and I write the date when it was finished. And uh, it's just a, uh, a way I do things. Like all these um, spurls I made, each one will get a, will get a number eventually. And what number are you up to so far? Uh, 396, yeah. Another thing that is a handy tool for me is a notebook and I'll uh, make a sketch. Like I know this is one, a piece that I just finished a little while ago and it's a lidded hollow form. And I just, uh, I'll have the wood and I know how roughly how big it is, but I'll make a sketch of what I want the thing to look like. Um, they're just notes and also like when I'm drawing something, I'll keep a log in here when I'm drawing. Over here in my toolbox, I do have just two drawers dedicated to my wood turning stuff. And in this drawer is where I keep my flex cut stuff and my carver here. Um, I use these flex cut uh, blades. And I use a Ryobi uh, carver. Um, it, it's, these things are great. You just, once you apply a little pressure, it'll start vibrating. And uh, you have two speeds. I've got the attachment for the Fordham, but it just, this is just smoother. I just really can feel like I can do a little bit more control with this unit here. Then I also have a handle for those, and I'll do, do some hand chasing, too, if I need to. Um, I've got a bandsaw. It's a 17-inch Grizzly bandsaw. Um, I use it mainly for um, uh, resawing a log or anything like that. Um, then I've also got a sander with a 10-inch disc and a six-inch belt here. This is my dust collection system. It's a Grizzly system. Um, it's a one micron filter, and I've got the bandsaw, the sander attached to it. And I also have a hood here. It's an, on an old tripod, and I'll use that. I'll bring it over and set it by the lathe when I'm sanding. What kind of sharpening system do you use, David? Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you that. Let me, let's wheel it out of, over here so you can see it better. Um, what I've got is a, um, this is a Delta 8-inch uh, grinder. Um, I used to have a, um, I bought it at Woodcraft, a slow spree grinder. And this one, though, <laughs> my other one crapped out, and I needed a grinder. So luckily, they sell these at Lowe's, and it's, you can crank it down to the same speed as the, um, uh, uh, the slow speed grinder. So I just keep it down on the lower end. For the wheels, I use the um, CBN wheels. And I've got 180 grit and 320 grit. And I like the, uh, the four-way, I guess is what they call it, where it wraps around the sides, and where that is very handy if you're sharpening a hollow tool. You don't have to do all this. You can just take it and do the side and just bring the piece around, and just one pass, you've, you've sharpened the, the tool. So that's, that's why I like the four-way. Then I use the Wolverine uh, jig. As a matter of fact, I just got this before. <clears throat> I got that. I had this thing I made. I, I made this after uh, David Ellsworth's school. As a matter of fact, this piece of wood is, I don't know, what some probably some exotic wood he gave me. And I made a, a bracket for it, and I used to have that mounted here. 
and it was set up for the Ellsworth gouge, which uses this uh, jig. But on the Wolverine, it, it's too low. So I made this piece. It's got magnets in it. And I can take it and pop it in here. And it brings the height up to the correct setting. And then I've got a little template. I just set that in there and bring it up till it touches the wheel and tighten it. And then I'm ready to sharpen an Ellsworth gouge. Then I still have, though, the other, the one-way uh, 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 jig, I guess they call it. And then when I'm using that, I also went ahead and invested in the, all the various angle guides so that I can get the things set up for whatever gouge I'm, I'm trying to sharpen, uh, and I'm ready to go. And one thing I did, I just bought this. Well, it was when, I um, uh, forget who it was, trying to get the, the package deal uh, at Christmas time. And uh, uh, so I got it, got it around the first of the year. And I realized when I did that, I used to have an aluminum oxide wheel here. I couldn't do carbon steel anymore on it. So that's when I bought uh, another grinder over here with uh, aluminum oxide wheels that I can use just to, if I gotta sharpen something with carbon steel so I don't gum up my um, uh, CBN wheels. This side here I use for sharpening all my um, scrapers. Um, and that's mainly the, the thing I do with this. And this I use for all my gouges and I sharpen my hollow tools with that wheel. I also have I don't use it a lot, but I have the um, uh, Beal buffing. Yeah, yeah. Beal buffing system, and I use it mainly with um, uh, use it on my lathe, and I use it with uh, <coughs> when I do the um, uh, wood turner's finish. It polishes real nice. And I'll get on and use that to to polish it up sometimes. But most of the other finishes I use, like the, the wipe on poly and the, um, of course, in Mahoney's, you wouldn't, wouldn't do any buffing with that. Mm -hmm. Tell me, David, on a, on a <coughs> guess, what would be the overall size of your shop, length and width? Uh, width wise, I think the garage was 22 feet uh, wide. And probably about, originally it was a garage, two car garage, 22 by 22. And probably width-wise, I may be a little bit more than half of it. So, pay say, 14 by 22, something like that. Yeah. You have managed to put a lot of material in a small space by consolidating. Yeah. It's, uh, it looks like these shelves here are your primary area for mm -hmm. storage. Yeah, and one thing I'm going to do right now, they're open. I was, I'm going to fabricate some doors to go on those just so they keep the dust mm -hmm. down inside there. But uh, yeah, that, that's that been a real handy bookcase. It, it was literally one of our old bookcases that I acquired and, and now I use it for my stuff. I forgot to mention I have a, a, a fan, uh, a room fan, room filter. And I run that whenever I'm out here working too, doing turning. And also, uh, something else, <clears throat> to me it's important to have, um, I think if you're doing any kind of turning, um, even though you think you don't generate a lot of fine dust, you do. And I use uh, the JSP uh, power cap for my, and I wear this whenever I'm turning, sanding, doing anything, and it, it, it really does a nice job. It um, is uh, light. Um, uh, I, I was going to get the, I forget the name of the other company that makes one, but when I was in Raleigh, I got to try one of these out, and I said, wow. It, it cost a little more, but it was just a nicer, I thought a nicer system, but I strongly recommend if you're, you turn wood, wear one of these. I see you're wearing glasses. Can you wear your glasses with that hood on it? It doesn't, oh, yeah. doesn't interfere at all. No problem at all. Yeah. No problem at all. 
And when we first arrived today, you were pointing out that the workbench is on wheels. Yes. Why is that? That is so I can move it. Like if I'm, sometimes I might need to, to saw a big board or something. I'll move the bandsaw out. It's on wheels. And I can roll this over out of the way. Give me a little more room. Or maybe I'm working on a piece of furniture or something. I can open up a little space to work on that. Also, this thing has a, a big heavy-duty shelf underneath of it, and I keep up. I have little crates with different uh, types of wood in them, and uh, uh, just like all a little stuff that I, well, it's like what I make these things with. I keep in, in bins down here underneath the workbench. I don't see a lot of wood storage. Where is your wood storage? It's out here in the garage. If you had to move this shop, um, and you move to the same space, was, would there be anything you'd do different? The only thing I can think of, I, I like the layout. Um, I would, I, I like natural light. I think I would try and, uh, you know, maybe either I could have flip-flopped everything and had my lathe over by this window here. I built this door in. I added that door when I... Uh, we moved into the house. There wasn't a door. The only door was the door uh, to the house. So I had that added. Maybe could have flip-flopped it and taken advantage of these windows. Uh, but I, I, I really like natural light when I'm, when I'm working. It's just nice having that, that natural light. And are there any issues that you're struggling with that maybe somebody in, in the audience might have an answer to? Uh, uh, end grain tear out and walnut. <laughs> no, um, I, um, as far as struggling with, as far as a workshop goes, um, I can't think of anything. Okay. Yeah, I can't think of anything. And are there any tips or tricks? You've got a lot of little things around here you've done. Any, any tips or tricks that you, you uh, additional that you might want to share with anyone? Um, I tend not to throw when you like resaw a log or something like that. I'll save pieces of wood and uh, like this was a, I resawed a walnut log and I ended up with a nice slab and I might, one thing I've been doing is making these little spurtles and it came out of this piece of, of wood. Um, I don't, I mean, just retain things like this piece here. I forget what I was making. It's a piece of cherry, but uh, I can use it for a jam chuck. Or um, I've also, something I've done uh, with some of these pieces is I make brooches. And I, um, you can buy these stones from um, Craft Supply. They're 20 millimeters in diameter, various, my, Malachite and agate and I'll turn a, a little medallion or turn a brooch and put one of those medallions in the middle of it. And uh, just it's, uh, uh, you know, try and utilize all much, as much of my wood as possible. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to see your shop. Yeah. Uh, if anyone has any questions for you or any things that they'd like to share with you, would you mind if we gave out your contact oh, information? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. please well, you do. can contact uh, David Bushman two ways. Uh, one, because he's the vice president of Richmond Woodturners. If you go to the Woodturners website, which is richmondwoodturners.org, and go to the officers page, just click on vice president under the contact list, and that will direct you to an email directly to David. If you want to contact David personally, uh, I believe your, your email address is uh, dbushman, that's D-B-U-S-H-M-A-N at gmail.com. Uh, dbushman, the number's 54 at gmail.com. Pretty important numbers. Yeah. If you, if you do the other one, you'll get some rocket scientist with NASA. Well, you might have a little fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again. We certainly appreciate okay. uh, the tour. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to have you.